lovies! Welcome back to my channel. So today, of course, is Wednesday, so there should be an episode of Bible journaling with a message. I am going to do that, but I'm going to do something a little different along with it. I've had many questions on how I Bible journal. I've had people ask me the like, products I use, how do you go about it, um, even some questions like how are you okay with writing over text and things like that. So I thought I would address some of those things, show you some of the products and kind of steps that I take to Bible journal. There will be a message today. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to fit it all in, but when I get into the editing and all that, I'm sure it'll work all out. There might be some voiceovers and parts and stuff like that, but I'm just going to be led and just go for it. So instead of me rambling, let's go for it. <laughs> so of course, one of the first steps to Bible journaling, um, art worship, if you will, is of course you have to find where God leads you in the word of God. Our message today is going to be coming out of our regular reading, which is in Psalms, but I chose to do my art worship today in the Song of Solomon, which is one of my absolute favorite chapters out of the entire Bible. <laughs> it truly is. I'm not going to go into much detail because we will be going over Song of Solomon if you're going to follow me throughout the year. I plan on reading the Bible for a year and doing art worship in it and things like that. So I'm not going to go into great detail about Song of Solomon, but I have to tell you it's one of the best books of the Bible. Love it, love it, love it. So one of the first things that you're going to need to do to begin your art worship is you're going to have to prepare your page. Whether you're going to be using paints, watercolor pencils, or actually watercolor paints, inking with stamping and things like that, you really need to prepare your page. Not only does it help against wrinkling, but it helps with bleed through and things like that. Now, this is optional. Some people don't prep their pages because they really like the um, wrinkling and bleed through. I mean, they think it makes your Bible look rustic and things like that. Whatever suits you, you need to do. I personally always treat my pages because when I turn the page, there might be something else that I want to art worship about and I don't want the page to be ruined. It doesn't, doesn't, keep it from wrinkling altogether, but it sure does help. So my suggestion is to use clear gesso. Make sure it's clear because you can get white gesso and if you do that, it'd be like painting your paper. It'll be completely white. Make sure it's clear. I've even tried um, Mod Podge. But before I got the gesso, I used Mod Podge. Mod Podge did not work as well as the gesso, so I suggest gesso, and I use a little like foamy brush because if I use a paintbrush, I notice I get paintbrush lines on my paper, and then when I go to make my imaging and my art worship and stuff, those lines come through. So I recommend like a spongy kind of brush to treat your page with. So just make sure you shake up your gesso really good and put a good amount down. Spread it out evenly with your brush, and then when I'm done, I usually take a blow dryer to it. The heat and stuff just seems to work better. So I'm going to do both pages here. I usually take it from the inside out, and I make very even strokes because, like I said, I don't want um, a lot of lines and things like that because when you do lay down your media, whatever it is, mixed media, whatever you're using, it, it, it does show up. So I just smooth it all out and make it very even. Once I've applied the gesso, I just give it some time to dry, or like I said, um, a lot of times I take my blow dryer to it. Whatever works for you. If you don't have a dryer, just give it about 10 minutes to make sure that it's fully dry before you begin to add your mediums or blow dry it, whatever works for you. So now that my Bible page is dried, I have a couple techniques that I wanna share with you before I apply the techniques that I'm going to for this particular verses. So one of the th cool things that I learned from other YouTubers and I thought was really neat, especially for me, because I am not the best at drawing. I just, I do not have that talent. That's another reason why I specifically liked this um, Bible because it did have a lot of this in it, which I can color great. But I also want to be very free and inspirational on my own, despite not being able to draw that well. So what I learned was to get 
deli wrap which is the sheets that they wrap your deli meat in now you say this stuff could be just like wax paper but that's where you're wrong these deli sheets don't have any wax on them wax paper will not work in this because number one the wax reflects any inks or color pencils or watercolors that you want to use so wax paper doesn't work but this deli wrap paper is translucent it's see-through and there's no wax on it so it's fantastic to take on your colors whether you're using stamping you're drawing yourself with watercolor pencils or prismas or pens whatever it may be that you're using this this stuff works fantastic. I got mine at my local grocery store at the deli counter. They charged me $6.99 and gave me a box. And what I do is I draw on the deli paper because like I said, I am not the best at drawing. I know what I want in my head, but it never looks that way. <laughs> So instead of taking my marker, my watercolor pen, whatever it is that I'm going to be using and just going for it in my Bible and taking a chance that I really don't like it, I mess up or I ruin it, I draw it out on the deli paper. And as you can see, it's completely see-through. It's not a big deal. And then I cut it out and then I use Mod Podge to adhere it to my Bible. And I'll show you what this looks like. You guys have already seen this. Um, this was another day's um, Bible journaling and message. And this is the deli paper. I drew this out on the deli paper and then adhered it to my Bible with Mod Podge. And I had to redraw this like four times. So I'm so happy that I didn't just do it in my Bible and be like, oh, I hated how it turned out. Whereas it's not a big deal. If I don't like it on this paper, I just crumble it up and I throw it away. So this is a great idea. Another thing too is, now let me explain what I'm doing. There's a scripture in here in Song of Solomon, which is on this page here, which is Song of Solomon chapter two, verse four. He brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. So this is my banner that I made and it has love in it. Now, because I don't draw the best, I can just do without but I do love trying my hand. I want to be artistic in my creative worship as best as I can. But if I really failed at this after like three or four attempts and was just like, Ugh, this is horrible, you can just do stamping. So for instance, I have these beautiful stamps here and look at this love. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I can just stamp this up with a beautiful colored ink. Like um, I had one sitting here, like this beautiful blue. Stamp it up with that and then I can just stamp it on my page. As my idea to um, do this is my, the banner over me was love, is that I'm going to take my little Julie Nutting girl here. I'm going to put her off to the side as me because there is no way that I'm going to be able to draw a full size person. That's really, really pushing it. I don't care how much deli wrap I have. And then I'm going to put the banner over her as love. So this is my idea. But if I really didn't like that, then I can just do stamping the whole way through and just put love over here this way. So those are two different techniques to um, do what you want to do in your creative Bible journaling. There are other ideas where you can take stencils. I use a lot of stencils in my Bible journaling as well. I'm just showing you some ideas before I show you how I'm actually going to put this together. So with these stencils, stencils look absolutely beautiful. Um, these are all stencils here in my Bible. They really, really add beauty. They add texture. They add depth. These little birds down here, they're stencils as well. I absolutely love them. And for stencils, again, you can do this in a million different ways. For this particular stencil all I did was take a green marker with my stencil which was this one right here I don't want to lose my page here which was this one as you can see this one right here if I lay it on top you're gonna see it right there see how that comes through yep I just took a green marker and went over that with stencil but you can take inks 
and you know lay this on your Bible take the ink and go like this and get it all down you could take a paper towel and zhuzh it on so stencils are also wonderful to use in your Bible journaling along with stamping which I mixed I did stencils and stamping on this page so and I think it turned out really really beautiful so guys you can do a million different things however you feel um just go for it wherever the Lord leads you to use in your creativity today I'm going to be doing a new element not only am I going to be doing stamping in my Bible but I think I'm going to go for it and use the love banner that I made because it's from my heart it would be easier just to use the stamp but this is what I really feel but I'm going to use my stamp as well but I'm also going to use stickers in my Bible as well. That is another medium that you can use in your Bible, stickers and washi tape. And the reason why I'm using stickers, because also in the Song of Solomon, there is another scripture that I absolutely love, and it is Take Us the Foxes, which in my regular Bible, which is just a, which is a new King James, it says, catch us, the little foxes that spoil the vine for our vines have tender grapes. And I know that sounds like a silly scripture, but it's actually very good. Foxes in this particular scripture is a representation of compromise, allowing compromise in your life. So a fox is sly, he's sneaky, compromise comes in as sly and sneaky. And when the fox comes in and spoils the tender grapes, which is a representation a brand new fruit the fox comes in and steals your fruit the things that you have been working on and compromise is the same exact way compromise when you compromise anything in your life um, it will come in and it'll steal what God has been trying to do in your life I'm not gonna preach I'm not going any further than that but um, I will be doing a great message on that when we get to Song of Solomon, but that is also one of my absolute favorite scriptures in Song of Solomon. I'm telling you, Song of Solomon is one of my absolute favorite, 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 favorite book of the Bible. And I also wanted to um, put lilies in here because Song of Solomon talks many times about lilies and like um, chapter two here, verse two, as a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. So I found some beautiful lily stickers here and I found some foxes and I'm going to use my stencils here I'm going to use my stencils I'm going to be using this vine stencil again and then I'm going to be drawing big grapes off of them so I'm using a whole bunch of different mediums stamping I drew I'm using stickers I'm going to be stenciling so guys you can just do a mixture of anything and I feel like I'm talking 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 a lot but I really wanted to show you guys that you can do all different kinds of mediums in your Bible it really is however you're led wherever your creativity is and guys I feel like I'm a very creative person but like I said I cannot draw on things like that so I'm just going for what the things I can do it's my art worship so whatever you can do the Lord loves it because it's all about your heart not about your works now that I think I gave you a great base of many different techniques and styles and things that you can use in your Bible to do your art worship I think I'm gonna go for it and begin to art worship in my creative Bible and I'm just going to mute it from here and I think from here I'm going to be doing a voiceover but before I get to that I wanted to show you today's reading comes out of Psalms 91 and this is my art worship for Psalms 91 which is the where the message is coming out of Psalms 91 is one of my absolute favorite scriptures I have many you'll probably hear me say this many times over <laughs> the year but Psalms 91 really is a special scripture it's you it's very well known but it is so so powerful and guys I hand you this I just went for it I didn't use any of my deli paper I just went for it with a bright beautiful gold gel pen I used my new Prisma colored um, pencils to color in the big angel wing here I used my new Jane Davenport paint over pen to do um, his angels charge over you I used gel pens to write out a portion of the scripture here 
and then I did a lot of stamping. So there's all different kinds of elements in this one as well. And I have to tell you, to date, this is one of my favorite, um, whatever you wanna call it, creative worship. So I'm really, really happy with this. So I'm going to get into the message now, which will be a voiceover as I do my beautiful, my art worship in Song of Solomon. So I'm going to begin by reading Psalms 91 to you. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be with your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, The Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent, because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What an absolute beautiful scripture. Verse number one starts it off. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That in itself is absolutely gorgeous. We are in him and he is in us. So if we dwell within him, his shadow overtakes us. It covers us. And under his covering, we are protected from all of these things that are mentioned in Psalms 91. He will save you from the fowler snare, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. Those types of things are absolutely beautiful. And those types of things are things that we deal with in our everyday life. There is pestilence. There are deadly things that come um, against us. The fowler snare is supposed to be a representation of the plots and plans of the enemy. And if you are resting in your God, if you are dwelling with him, if you are in constant communion and communication with him, then you are resting in that place with him. And because of that, he gives you protection. He covers you with his feathers. I also think that represents, too, he will give you strategic plans and ways to go about doing things to keep you safe from the snares of the enemies for things that are happening on the physical earth. I don't for a second think that the Lord leaves us without um, wisdom or knowledge on how to act upon things that are happening around us. And if you are in constant communication with the Lord, then those things are made readily available to you and he is your protector. I also love in verse seven where it says a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe it. What an incredible, incredible, incredible promise. You will only see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most higher dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Praise God for that. I am a firm believer that um, you can definitely take the word in your mouth and speak to storms and tornadoes and hurricanes and you can tell them to leave, to dissipate, to dissolve. I absolutely believe in the authority and the power that God has given you in your mouth and I believe that that is a direct reference to this in Psalms 91. I love that he says that he has commanded his angels concerning you and that they guard you in all their all your ways and that they will lift you up in their hands. You know, we're not to be obsessed or get concerned with uh, with angels in any kind of um 
manner that we begin to worship them. But this is such an expression of God's love for you that he created beings to guide you, to direct you, to keep you from harm, that you can call upon your angels to help you in certain situations. That just speaks of how much God loves you. He created beings to help you and protect you. That is a father who loves his children. And then it talks, um, if we go down here to verse 13, it really speaks of your authority, the authority that God has given you in him. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. And of course, the lion and the serpent are always a um, example of the enemy. You know, he comes um, as a serpent in the garden. And then we hear also in the word of God that he is like a roaring lion that seeks to devour, steal, kill, and destroy. He says here, he will give you, he will give you the authority. He will give you what you need to tread on the lion and the cobra. He's giving you authority for those things. And then if we see down here in verse 14, because he loves me, says the Lord, this is the Lord speaking, because you love me, I will rescue you. I will protect you for you acknowledge my name. He will call on me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver and honor you. With long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Woo! How can it get any better than that? So if you need encouraged today to know how much your God loves you, how much his protection is available for you, please, please, please go in your own Bible and really Read, study, meditate, and dwell on Psalms 91. It is extremely encouraging. God's love, his manifest presence and protection is all in that scripture. And it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful sentiment that he covers you. He comforts you. He protects you. And if you call on his name and make him your dwelling place and have that constant communion and communication with him, he will be your God. He will hear you when you call and he will save you. Okay, lovies. I hope that you enjoyed this experience of DIY tutorial how to art worship slash creative Bible journaling message. <laughs> I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the finished layout. I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. This is definitely what my heart wanted to express that God's love is a banner over me and that he catches the little foxes that want to come in and bring temptation because they're sly and they're slick and they bring compromise and compromise can be so damaging in your walk and it's just beautiful and the lilies because he is the lily of the field and uh, my heart just is very blessed by this and I pray my Lord's heart is even more blessed by this because it just it's it's what my heart wanted to express and very quickly before I close out the video I just wanted to show you by using the gesso that I showed you earlier in the video there is no bleed through so there is no worry about anything coming through on the other side and ruining your pages to do more art worship. So I thought that that was absolutely awesome. And then just a quick little um, tidbit, because I didn't say it in the video earlier, I do um, put wax paper or one of those deli sheets in between the pages when I do my art worship. And as you can see, there is an outline of the girl stamp. And because I put that in between the two pages, it didn't bleed on to the other page. And if anything goes off, like you can see, like her stamp went off. Here's some of the um, stenciling. It went off the page. That protects all that. So I do recommend that you put something in between your pages as you are to worship. But thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I hope this blessed you as much as it blessed me. I love creative Bible journaling, art worship. It really is part of my heart in giving thanks and love to my king. I hope you guys are blessed wherever you are. Remember to always do what you love and do it with great passion. Have a great blessed day, and I'll be talking to you guys very soon in another video.
Until then, know that I love you. God loves you more and you're special. Bye, guys.